morning. Good morning. Today is um, Sunday, June 30th. And right after the service, we have a special session of the 290th annual meeting. Do I need to, Bruce, do I need to have Bob read that now? No, no? okay, later. <coughs> um, it's for funding of parking, the meeting will be for funding of parking lot repairs and it's submitted by the Board of Trustees. We have a new admin assistant. Her name is Carolyn Rahal, and she'll begin on July 2nd. She has extensive experience working in church settings and will be a great addition to our TCC community. Um, there during the summer months, Flash will be sent bi-weekly. And our next newsletter will begin in late August. Refreshment, excuse me, refreshments on the lawn today right after the service. Um, and our praise service will be also on the lawn this morning. Um, and if you think of it, the, the friendship pads are on the inside aisle and if you could pass those to your neighbors and back, that'd be wonderful. All right, let's be in the spirit of worship. Thank you, Stephanie, and good morning, church. How's everybody doing? Good. Yeah, this humidity is messing up my hair this morning. All right, would you please stand and join me in our call to worship? Please stand. Out of the depths we cry to you, O oh Lord. Heed the anguish of our pleas. More than those who wait for the morning. Now let us pray together. Bless and heal us, O oh God, for we are stricken in body and in spirit as we stretch out our hands to touch the hem of your robe, make us well, course through our minds and bodies with your healing power as we place our faith in your mighty spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us sing together hymn 628, We Cannot Measure How You Heal.
come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Today's reading is from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. But first let us pray. We behold those with unflinching faith, O God, and yearn for their unquestioned assurance of your powerful presence. We are tired of mourning the dead and long to laugh with Jairus' household as Christ called a beloved daughter back from the world beyond. We seek not merely to be healed in body, but to be made whole in spirit as well. Heal our fickle hearts as we wait for you. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading, Mark 5, 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, Some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. 
He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thank be to God. God. Thank you, Barbara, for the reading of God's Holy Word. And good morning to you once more. How's everybody doing? Are you excited for Fourth of July week? Have you got your fireworks plans in action? All right, I, I heard uh, our town to the south, uh, I heard their fireworks last night. Did you hear them? My dog sure did. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you have a great week. Uh, who in here loves boundaries? Do you love boundaries? Do you like structure? Do you like structure? No, nobody likes boundaries. I know a lot of people like, like boundaries. They like it like a good system. And uh, whenever uh, people get out of that, that mindset, their boundaries, they don't like it. You met those, haven't you? They're like, no, it's, it's supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be that way. And uh, if you cross those lines, lines, you're on my bad side. Now, there's those of us, this is how I am. I may have boundaries in ways that I'm thinking, and the people that cross the boundaries in my mind, they may get on my nerves, but I like them because they challenge me to think in a different way. So, I absolutely love sports. And I love the rules of the sports. I love baseball, but recently I love basketball. Go Celtics. Congratulations on that championship. But, you know, on a court or a baseball field, a football field, you got boundaries, right? And you got to stay within those. you got yard lines, you got bases, and there are certain rules that you got to play by. Tennis courts, may I go on? Uh, you got to stay within the boundaries. And, and uh, you know, like John McEnroe, you, you remember that guy? You know, like uh, sometimes he, he thought that the, the ref didn't went across his boundary. He didn't like it, did he? And, boy, that made, that made for great television, didn't it? <laughs> and, uh, you know, in baseball, I'm not supposed to like this, but sometimes boundaries are crossed, and there's some brawls or two. I'm not supposed to like those, right? So I repent of that. There's boundaries that in those sports that you're not supposed to cross, and there's rules, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, but uh, there's a sport that I don't know if you know about. I put it in a flash. It's called parkour. It was created in France back in the 1950s. And uh, this sport was created by people who don't like to stay within the boundaries. And uh, let's say you're down in Boston, and, and you know, you got a lot of cement, right? And you got a lot of boundaries and steps. And these people, let's say they're down at Faneuil, and you see them, and, and they're not going to walk around the boundaries. They're going to ride through them. <laughs> they're going to jump over things, and they're going to go over it. And you're like, those people are crazy. As a matter of fact, there was a show that used to be on called The Office. And they were spoofing this. And one day, three of them were going through their office space, and they were just going over a desk and jumping over everything. <laughs> and I laughed so hard, and they were saying, parkour, parkour. And there's a lot of you just like, what is he talking about? But uh, this sport was created for people who just can't stay within the boundaries. And they go through the obstacles. And uh, let's relate that to life and our spirituality. And going through the boundaries. And, and what about the people that need our help and our love? And going through the boundaries that have been created in our world. 
And then we got this Savior named Jesus. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. Did he cross boundaries? So he seemed to like to go back and forth across the Sea of Galilee, didn't he? So last week we heard him going across and he went through a storm. This time it seemed a little bit easier. He just went back across and uh, his fame was growing. And there's people that needed to see him, see him because there's people that need to be healed and, and there's people that needed somebody that they love to be healed. And they were down to their last resort. They, they needed Jesus. And maybe you've been there. And you've had all these obstacles that you have gone through. And you're down to that last part. And you're like, okay, I've tried everything. I need you, Jesus. So, what about the woman that had been bleeding for 12 years? 12 years. There's a lot to this story. People had given up on her. She was unclean. Did you hear that? Unclean. Doctors, the priests, they had discarded her. Wouldn't it be surprised if she was living on the outside of the village? She literally crawled through the crowd to touch the hem of his gown. She was desperate, but how she lost faith. Going through that crowd was more than going through that crowd. She was going through every obstacle that she had faced in her life. Every person that said, there's nothing I can do for you. You are lost, you are unclean, and did she lose faith? Absolutely not. And touched Jesus' him. And what does Jesus say to her? Your faith that you have not lost has healed you. Her faith. It sounds like her faith was a lot bigger than a mustard seed. And what, what about Jairus? What about... He, he's a leader in the synagogue. Jesus had not... Uh, his credentials had not been... Uh, uh, approved by the synagogues, right? You know, us pastors have to go through this strenuous process to have our credentials recognized. Strenuous. It takes years. And uh, he hadn't been through that. He hadn't been before any priest or any council. He was going out and preaching the word of God. And uh, he was healing people and he was going across boundaries and they did not like it. And Here's Jairus that he crossed the boundary. The woman that had been bleeding, she crossed the boundary. They weren't supposed to do that. There's a lot of boundary crossing here, right? There's a, a lot of people going against the grain. And, and, and I'm going to stop right here. People like that will make us feel uncomfortable, right? We don't like that. Because if my life is going well, I don't want people to cross my boundaries. Yet Jairus, he wanted his daughter to be healed. You know, when he did that, there are people like, oh, no, she's just as much as dead. Dead. The people had given up. Why bother him? Why bother Jesus? Now, that's interesting. Why bother him? There must have been a little faith in Jesus, right? That he could heal this young girl, this young lady. And guess what? He goes and tells her to, to get up. Get up from your sleep. And what happens? She does. A father, a synagogue leader who crossed the boundary that he was not supposed to, to bring healing, he crossed the boundary. And people felt uncomfortable. I could imagine. Oh, he shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have done that. What's more, what's more important? The boundaries of that world the, world, the world that we have created here, the boundaries we have, are life. What's going on around us? Can you think of a few boundaries around us? Put those in your mind and in your heart. And have you been challenged? 
in those boundaries and what you think about life. Who are those people? Who are those people on the other side of those boundaries? And what does God call you to do? So, uh, you know, I, I've talked a lot about my uh, Methodist days, right? Maybe you don't want to hear about them anymore. I'm, I, you know, I'm six years removed from them. Yeah, six years last week that I've been here in Massachusetts. I used to have these things called bishops. Yeah, you know, here in the UCC, we believe that, that, that Christ is the sole head of the church. And, uh, but there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that system. But uh, uh, I've shared uh, about my thoughts about Bishop, Bishop Will Williman. Has anybody ever read any of his books? Great, great theology. I, but I was so happy when uh, he, uh, he was up, his term was up, and they moved him back to the Ivory Tower at Duke University. I was so happy. I would have helped him move. I even told him so. <laughs> but over the years, I've come to really respect him. I sent him an email a few years ago. I, I love his theology, his books. I, I listen to some of his sermons sometimes. He's kind of snarky and mean to me, but he really gets his point across. But I remember uh, he shared this story again. I remember it from many years ago. He, he was talking to uh, an old colleague of mine, and uh, this colleague, colleague, this pastor, served in a very impoverished area, very impoverished. It, uh, drug dealers, uh, gangs. Uh, it was the kind of place where... He didn't stop to get gas after dusk. He didn't do it. Bars on the windows. He just didn't stop. You, you didn't go to McDonald's. People would be shot in the parking lot a few times a year. Could you imagine? This is where I'm from. And uh, he was talking to the pastor. Uh, the pastor's parsonage had been robbed six times. So he's talking to the pastor, and he goes, I'm going to move you. This, this is too much. You've been here six years, and you've been through all this, and I'm going to send you to a, a safer place. And he goes, no, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. And he goes, I, I, I wouldn't do good in that, that setting. I can't preach like you. I can't tell those great stories. Uh, I... The only type of preaching I can do is just preach from the text, which means the passage, and uh, just lay it out there and let people decide. Uh, I wouldn't be able to preach to uh, upper-middle-class people that have it made, that don't feel uncomfortable from anything in life. <laughs> that got Bishop Willman thinking. That gets me thinking. Does that get you thinking? I don't like to be uncomfortable as well. There was one sermon from many years ago where I was really criticized afterwards. Somebody came up to me and said, uh, you sound like a liberal. Ten minutes later, somebody comes up to me and says, you sound like a conservative. So next Sunday, I, created, I, I put a little illustration in that sermon. I said, uh... Uh, recently, uh, two people came up to me and said this and that, and they just smiled at each other. And I just smiled. It felt good. That's how the Word of God is, is supposed to work. It, it's supposed to break down boundaries and speak to all people. It, it's, a, it's a living Word. It's, it's a challenge us all. We're, I'm not supposed to come here to confirm myself. There's been many times when I stand before you when I feel like I'm stepping on my own toes where my own theology is being challenged. Maybe I don't challenge enough. Because over the years as a pastor, I know nobody uh, has a problem challenging me. <laughs> and that's okay. And that's okay. I, I like that. Don't be scared of when somebody challenges the boundaries that you have created in your souls, in your hearts. I often think what Christian moral accountability is. Do you ever think about that? Accountability. 
How many of you are accountable to yourself? How do you live your life? Living a good and holy life, a life of piety, uh, a life of goodness, of, you know, doing it the right way. Who you're accountable to? I often think about that. Who are we accountable to first? Ourselves or to our neighbor? I've encountered a lot of people in my life that their boundary is if people do it like me, then the other person is okay. That's not a good boundary. You have failed before you have started. I've been guilty of that myself. My toes are beginning to hurt. And it's not because these shoes are too small. You know, uh, sometimes you just have to break the laws of your soul that you have created the boundaries in there. And uh, I remember watching on uh, TV many years ago, uh, actually a, a really good story, uh, good news, which is hard to find these days if you watch TV, it is out there. Uh, if you read Flash, you saw about Dylan Reagan. Did anybody read that? Really, really cool guy. He works at Home Depot. Home Depot uh, in, in Portland, Oregon. I love to go up to our Home Depot. It's my favorite place. It's like therapy walking around. I could be looking at PVC pipe, and I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> oh, I need that. I need that. i got to get this. I don't, I don't buy it, but it's just like therapy. But anyway, he was out in the parking lot one day, and a, a young kid was kidnapped. Kidnapped. And the man took off with the kid. And he called the police on his mobile phone and says, what, I, what, what should I do? And, and uh, the police said, follow the man as far as you can. So he did. And eventually the police caught up with the man, and they got the child, and everything was okay. Well... Management at that Home Depot interviewed him, and they decided that he broke cor a corporate policy for safety. And he lost his job. Eventually, he got it back. And I'm guessing because of bad publici publicity for doing the right thing. He crossed the boundary to save a life. Who does that sound like? Sound like Jesus? What about Jairus? What about a woman that had been bleeding for 12 years? They crossed boundaries. To live life, to, to give life, to save a life. We often think of salvation as a far off distant land, but what if it's right here and right now? Jesus went through the obstacles. So, so should we do the same? Who's the number one obstacle out there in our lives? I'm my obstacle. I can't speak for you, but I know I'm my obstacle. Now, you may not see me going through the streets of Tewksbury doing parkour, <laughs> jumping over bushes or... The old sign here at the old uh, Bank of America building. But I hope you would pray with me that we would uh, remove the obstacles from our heart that keep us from sharing the life of Jesus Christ that we have been given. Let us pray. Great and wonderful God, thank you for tearing down boundaries in our souls, enhancing our spirits to serve you to bring healing to your land, to people, to have faith like those that we read about today and hear about today, a synagogue leader, a woman, to have faith in people like you, O oh Lord, Lord Jesus. May we remove obstacles from our hearts and our minds in our service to you so we can see our neighbors as you see them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing once more. 631, there is a bomb in Gilead.
You may be seated. Susanna. Good morning. Ski thanks the congregation for all the prayers and well wishes. He is still battling pneumonia, but he's slowly doing better. Jennifer is asking for prayers for her friend Diane, whose husband Joe passed away this week. Prayers for peace for that family. Continued prayers for Jacob's friend Kelly, who is as she continues to heal but is doing better. Praying for friends who are having family issues and also some health issues. Praying for peace and answers. Are there any other prayer requests in the sanctuary? Yes, Carolyn. Praying for Sven, who is in Sweden with his family, and had to help his dad who took a fall. We pray for answers and for um, decisions that need to be made about that family, and we pray for long distance family love and support and challenges as you're so far away from your loved ones. Yes, Kathy. So praying for Timothy and Sarah who are in Atlanta and praying for a safe trip home. Yes, Robin. Praying for your niece who is struggling with home security and what to do next and how to keep moving forward. Pam. Praying for Allison and Joe and their, their new wedding and a life of happiness together. And we're thankful that Vinny is here and we pray continued prayers for your healing after successful surgery and hope that it doesn't take forever to heal. Yes, Kathy. Continued prayers for Russ. Russ, wherever you are, we are praying for you, and we love you, and we miss you. He's home. He's home. Yay, Russ is home. And let us all pray for those who keep hitting boundaries, yet keep going forward towards touching Jesus' cloak for healing. Oh, Ashley, yes. So praying for your friend Rebecca, who took a fall but is doing well from that, whose husband is going to be having surgeries soon for his epilepsy, and who are praying for a healthy pregnancy and a safe delivery. Let us be in the spirit of prayer.
God, we thank you for this day of worship, for calling us here to this beautiful place you've given to us to celebrate your presence in our life, to feel your grace and wonder, to feel your love, and just to be in community. Again, we thank you for this day and all that we pray for. Thank you for hearing our prayers this day, for those that we pray for, for the battles that we go through. Help us for those obstacles will come. Help us to go through them. Help us to be unafraid. Help us and give us peace. Help us when we hurt. Send people to help. Help us heal. Again, give us peace when these battles come our way. In your mercy, O oh God, hear our prayers for those we lift to you today. Lord, we pray for our country, our world. We pray for all things. May your name reign in all these places. May your peace be there. And may we be your peace to the world, to share your grace and love, to bring change and hope back. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Lead our church unafraid into the future. As your spirit guides us, help us do your will, not ours. Help us to go forth and heal the cross boundaries. Help us to be unafraid to cross boundaries and go to Jesus and touch that hymn as well. God, help us to do just that on this day and every day every day of our life. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Now I invite our morning offering help to come forward. God, we thank you for this offering. You gave it all for us. This is the least that we can do to give back to you, to glorify you in your son's holy name. May we use this offering to share your love and grace with the world, to tear, tear down obstacles, to invite all people to your table, to, to share your grace again. In Jesus' name, amen.
one, four, 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 rain down. Who's ready for some refreshments out in the lawn? All right, let us pray once more. And a qu Oh, yeah, a quick meeting before then. All right. God of grace and wonder, again, thank you for this time of worship. And as, as we go forth today, may we go forth boldly and face every obstacle. And may we do it not only for us, but for our neighbors out there whom you love just the same. Let us go forth in service to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.